and I don't want to watch it myself, so we're gonna watch it together. <laughs> like, listen. Um, I know what I know of this this thus far is that the man is a pathological liar. Bitches found him because people can't have fun and whimsy. People can have fun and fucking whimsy, okay? Why would you go find his man? I don't have money for Mexico either. I'm going back to the Mexico thing. I don't have any money for that either. Anyway, I hope I never find love with a Mexican man because that would be real sad. Wait, participating. Uh, listen, let's watch it. Let's start. Wait. I feel like it's not that loud enough. Hold on. I feel like I feel like our ears need to bleed. One second. Make him come here. Exactly. He's gonna have to come to you or to America. Like, if you come to New Jersey and then I drive there, I'm just joking. <laughs> but nah, he should. Okay. Let's see. Let, let's see. Let's listen. I feel like you can't hear that. Can you hear that? Wait, can you hear it? Can you hear my desktop? I feel like you can't hear that. Nope, I don't think so. You're here for okay, now it's now it's here. Now it's that's working. Okay. Let's see. I'm ready. I'm going to We're ready. create this playlist series. Um, and I'm going to tell the story of how I met, dated, married, and divorced. Yep. Really liar. Mm -hmm. Um, this is my introduction slash disclaimer video. First and foremost, I'm gonna be truthful, even if it makes me look bad. I'm gonna be honest, but I'm also not gonna be disrespectful to anyone that was involved. I'm not going to use people's real names because I don't have their permission to do so. And Wait, let me say something. The biggest thing is, this man lies so much. He was talking on the phone every day. He was talking on the phone daily to no one. To no one. On the phone, they didn't, like, I didn't even hear this come out of her, her mouth. Because I've only seen, like, reactions people talking about it. And there's no way that he really sat there and talked to himself. There's just zero way possible. There's really zero percent chance. There's no chance that he sat there and talked to himself every day. There's just no way. I'm speaking Spanish and English. Supposedly, <laughs> five, six hour conversations with himself. Anyway, let's get back to it. <laughs> Same, I'm sarcastic as fuck. I just be over here like, you have to laugh, yup. Gotta laugh with a trauma, yup. Yes, queen. Yup, me, yup. It was 50 parts, so. It was 50 parts, so. It's been a few days, that's for sure. 50 parts is crazy. 50 parts is insane, bro. Wait. BRB, one sec. Alright, we're back. Amazing. I don't know what questions are, but I'm ready. Oh, also, also her son came out and like verified everything. I think the ex-wife also came out. There's like multiple people that have, have like said like, yeah, like whatever. But yes, it's verified. Thank God. In any way, shape, or form. Um, Honestly, somebody that talks to themselves for six hours. Do not communicate. We do not have mutual friends or anything that we're where we communicate through those people. No contact. I cannot stress that enough because I feel like somebody's gonna ask me, do you still talk to him? Absolutely not, baby girl. I've seen him, I heard from him, I want to hear from him, and I will tell the entire story until the last time I did hear from him and what happened. Amazing. Um we're doing drugs, guys. Yeah. This we're doing drugs, I forgot. My story. So we're doing drugs. So, um I am just a regular woman who thought she met the one. I'm scared of that. I'm scared of that. In real life, I'm scared. Imagine that'd be crazy. <laughs> um, most people have never came in contact with a pathological liar. I haven't. We, I'm scared. They're like a compulsive liar. It is not the same. A pathological liar has no reason for why they lie. They just be lying. And it's a lie for fun. Up, there's no limit to the lie. Um, I was once a psychology major. In a Actually, that might be a lie. I might not pathological liar. My bad. I didn't graduate with a psychology degree, but I'm very comfortable saying that he was a pathological liar. He was a narcissist. Nope. Yes, there was some mental. In my opinion, mental health issues going on. Hundred percent. I mean, lying part, absolutely. Um, so I want to preface all this by saying you're going to probably think, "What in the world? There's no way this happened." Everything you're going to hear me say actually did happen. Um, I never thought I was going to be in some sort of lifetime movie, but I was. Um, and she's pretty. This is sad. This is sad. She's pretty. She's, this man just played her. Like I said, I think if you allow me to tell the whole story, things will be answered. Um, and sorry, I do talk with my hands. It's just. It's a coping mechanism, so if you're like, why is she keeping her hands? Um, other than that, let's all take a deep breath. Let's get into it. Buckle in. And let's get into it. Because this was a fucking crazy ride. 
Wait a minute. It's crazy. Imagine how I feel as the person who lived it and had no idea what I was dealing with. I thought I knew. But okay. I could have done this better. I could have done this better, but I just out of nowhere was like, wait, I kind of want, I kind of want some ways first at the side. All right. Next part. <laughs> This is so dope. Wait, can I go up like this? Can I? Hold on. We're about to figure out how to like, how do, how do we just click into the, this thing? Wait, hold on. We're just gonna boop. Next part. Girl, where's my software servers? Oh my god, I have to refix it. Okay. Alright, I think we're ready. I think we're ready. Am I? Yeah, I'm not, I, I thought for a second. Oh my god. The hair, but here is part one of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Um, so I met my ex-husband around March 4th of 2020. Mm, we March, we love March. On Facebook dating site. Ooh, Facebook dating site. And matched on Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he was on both um, under two different names. So one was his actual name and the other one was a variation, like a nickname. Oh. Um, that he called himself. Different pictures. So it was a running joke between us. Oh, you ain't even recognize that, um... You had matched with me on Hinge. No, I didn't. Um, and also, that should have been a red flag. Immediately. Uh, you'll yep. notice in this story, I called it the United Nations of red flags. It is so many red flags that, I mean, you would have thought I was colorblind. <laughs> oh, I no. So, anyway, back to the story. We met around March 4th. We exchanged phone numbers. He called me, and we talked on the phone um, for the first time. In the first phone call, he told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California, from San Diego. His job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based here in Georgia. I'm not going to say the name. And so we also talked about his childhood. He told me um, he grew up in Philly. He's from Philly. Both of his parents were deceased. This is the first phone call. Both of his parents were deceased. His father um, was a Philadelphia police officer. His mom was a teacher. He also told me he um, went, he briefly lived in Augusta um, with his family. He had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. So I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone call we had. So mm -hmm. we talked about family. We talked about friends. We talked about our jobs. At the time, I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and he knew this and he just thought that was like, wow, you know, so you work with troopers all day. Yes, I did. Um, also in that phone call, he explained to me that he um, used to play football. He explained that he used to play arena football. I know nothing about arena football. Same as fuck. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Go dogs. But I don't know anything. I don't know, anything. I don't know about any of that. So he used to play arena her. football. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, oh, okay, you know, like, good for you. Uh, right. I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. That'll come into play later on. Oh. So he told me, you know, I just I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing, be and mm -hmm. they're helping me to look for a house. He was like, I'm trying right now. I'm in Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house, ideally in Atlanta, like Brookhaven, um, Sandy Springs. He was like, I, I, I just realized he's driving. I don't know what to do. So I realize that. Car, Holy know, shit. That's great. You know, you're looking to get a house. I'm just in the car, but he said she's like but fully I'm driving. Really too too many people here because I spend all my time at work, and you know this job is really demanding. So that was our first phone call. We talked more. He talked a lot, which took me by surprise because I'm not really used to men talking more than me. He talked a lot. Um, cool. <laughs> he eventually asked me out on a date. Our first date. Okay, talks too much. Talks Saturday, too much. March 7th, 2020. Um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant. I said Cheesecake Factory. <gasps> I love Cheesecake Factory. And so I love Cheesecake Factory. And so we to go out um, at a Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. Mm. I lived in Clayton County at the time. He lived in Gwinnett County. I realized that if you don't know anything about me, I don't know what, that yep, makes no sense. No, sense, no idea. We lived... Uh, about 45 minutes apart. Mm, so we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory over at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area, Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area. I was excited. Like, I called my friends and was like, She's still gonna be in here, she's like, Jesus. We'll see how it goes. First conversation was good. Um, hopefully, he looks like his pictures, because, you know, there's Ooh. always an issue with online dates. That's a scary hopefully thing. He looks like his pictures. So, on my way to our date, I took 285, and literally right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom and I lost control of Oh car. shit. Thank God that this So Destiny was like, girl, don't go see him. I knew what to do. Destiny was like, girl. My tire blew out. Destiny was like, girl, go home. So I called go him home. And I said, hey, I'm so sorry, but my Damn. tire just blew on The universe is crazy. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station and I said, you know, I gotta get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. He kinda paused, he got quiet, and he was like, where, you know, tell me exactly where you are, drop your pin. So I dropped the pin. And he came to the gas station. The police. The gas station. Ooh, got out of the car. The and I was, I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures. Thank God. I, I mean, like, at least one, one thing's not lie. Attractive, because he's like six four, six five. Um. Oh, also, man, I apologize. So let me go back. It's a long story. Good. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is that he was divorced. Mm. Um, and that his ex-wife, they had, she had mm -hmm. um, two children, a boy and a girl, who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about twenty. Mm -hmm. And he said that he had a very close relationship with mm -hmm. his stepkids. Um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced mm -hmm. because she cheated on him oh. um, out in California. And mm -hmm. so coming to Georgia was a new, new beginning. beginning yeah. 
she was still out in California. The kids were still out in California. Um, and so... Do the kids even exist? Like, there's no, Figure out next time you get double see. Because... Like. I have to put that in there because that will come back later. Ooh. So this is just setting the stage. Again, that first conversation was, we talked about family, job, friends, um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, you know, I would think people talk about in the first conversation. All right, now back to the tire blew out. So he shows up to the gas station. Mm -hmm. He changes my tire. Amazing. Thank you so much. I thought was the sexiest thing in the world. Um, and then he proceeds to say, hey, oh. I found a, play, a tire place around the corner. You need to get another tire. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't drive on this donut. So he followed me to, um, he followed me to the, to the tire place and then helped me get a tire, paid for it. So I was definitely Whoa. like, wow. Okay. Um, and so the vibe was good. So anyway, I get the car, I get the tire fixed. We follow each other to the Cheesecake Factory mm -hmm. over the perimeter. We hold hands walking into oh. the Cheesecake Factory. Okay. So in my mind, I'm like, this is just, this, oh my God, I had butterflies. That, that's, that's the look of a woman who had butterflies. So I had butterflies. And um, we go in, there's a long wait. Mm. And so we sit outside and we just talk. And the conversation's great. And this is where he tells me mm. what it is he's looking for. Okay. He tells me, you know, I'm, I believe at the time he was 42. Mm -hmm. He was like, I want to get married. Oh. And it'd be for real. He's like, my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away. I'm sad. Is she done? I don't want that. I want oh, yeah. Marriage, family, a house. Like, that is what. Pick a like, you know, I'm, as the a whole man, thing. Yep. So now, yeah. I want it to be for real because the first time. Didn't work out. Yeah. Really hurt me. Didn't work out. We don't even know what. We don't know if that's true either. So he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. um, Sounds like so it. He was like, what is it that you want? Mm -hmm. And I said pretty much the same thing. I was like, I'm ready to get married. Definitely want to have a family. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. Mm -hmm. So we both put on the table that we wanted marriage. Mm -hmm. And this is the end of part one. Okay. Please excuse the hair, but here is part one of who the fuck. All right, who the fuck did I marry? Part two. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. Mm. We both had established we were dating for marriage. Okay. We were not dating just to date. We were you not guys were looking for something. No, no, yeah. No same thing. Um, looking so for the same. The, the, yeah. The dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed. We talked. We talked about people, which um, <laughs> is kind of up my alley. My sense of humor. <laughs> it was. Just, it was a good vibe. So people watching day, and judging oh, on a date. I like dinner. Oh, dinner is funny. And he played this song for me by John Legend. I don't know the name of the song by the well by the time this video posts I will put the name at the bottom I can't remember the song I just remember Ooh. that John Legend was talking about I think I met my wife tonight I think I know that song and I thought it was maybe so I was like oh, oh my god so mm -hmm. anyway we ended up sitting in the car talking hours probably just about life and everything yeah until about midnight so during this conversation so. he again is telling me how it was he was, what it was like mm -hmm. living in California how he went out there he went to San Diego State he played football oh, San Diego okay. State um, he talked about how you know life he loved it out there so he stayed um, that's when he joined the company. Um, and then he I think he was a mechanic, no whatever he was saying in the beginning. football, but only did it for about two or three years. He claims that while he was doing arena football, Girl, what's arena? Hold on, going, hold on, what's arena football? Hold on, we got, we're gonna have to look it up because I'm too nosy. What is arena football? Hold on, it doesn't even exist. We're gonna find out in two seconds. What is I don't know how to spell one second. What what is arena football? Let's see what it is. I have no idea. The AFL played a formerly prep. code known as arena football, a form of indoor American football played on a 66 by 20 inch yard field. Uh, about a quarter of surface areas NFL field with rules encouraging offensive performance just something a typical faster pace and highest scoring game compared to NFL. Oh, so it's like it's it's, it's football for a smaller feet. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Got it. No, I got it. We're good. One, We're good. A championship. But again, keep in mind, I don't know anything about arena football. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm like, okay, cool. Got championships. And he was like, you know, he got a little offended. Like, yeah, they got championships. Like, I mean, but she didn't know about that. So on that team. So he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. Mm -hmm. He worked um, something in the IT area of mm -hmm. Apple. But it was in the store. Again, it was one of those. It's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon. I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it. Why? So we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife. It's because I asked. He was not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex mm -hmm. a lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out. Okay, What's going on with that, yeah. a, Are you ready for a relationship? Right, yeah. Or are like, you still mm -hmm. um, missing her? Yep. Yeah. So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated mm. at one point in time somebody I worked with. Mm. That will come back later. Um, Are we jealous over like cool having a working shit? Before me and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Um, so the conversation was good. Midnight comes and um, I go home. Yes, I went home. We ended up talking, talking, and talking. Mind you, our first date was March 7th. Mm -hmm. And within about two and a half weeks, Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were, oh. about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked every day. We went out again at Red Lobster. Um, mm, the lobster's so good. I, don't even, I, I, I love Red Lobster. Red lobster. Um, <laughs> but everything was going great. Perfect. Amazing. The issue was, where are we going to quarantine? So Ooh, the question okay. was, are we going to quarantine at his place? Or yours. Which he had like a studio mm -hmm. type of situation. Like it clearly, where he was staying, 
um, I was like, it's like a studio apartment, mm. but he kept telling me like, this is temporary because mm. I'm looking for a house. Like okay. he showed me, Oh. he showed me the email from the, from a woman who worked at the company where she was out on maternity leave, but she was, she was putting him in contact mm -hmm. <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house. So I was just like, okay, this is definitely temporary. Like he's not trying yeah, he's to looking, yeah. Clearly he's looking. stay here long term. And she was apologizing in the email. I'm so sorry. You know, this should have been taken care of before you got here, but it wasn't. Da, 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 da. I saw the email. I saw the email. I that was it. true. I read the email. Um, so the decision was, are you we going to quarantine there at the studio or, or yours? Yeah. My house? First mistake I made. Well, there's a lot. But this was a mistake. <laughs> no, no, there's a lot. Caution moment. During one of our dates, because um, keep in mind, in those two weeks, we were seeing each other quite a lot. A yeah. Um, nothing. Nothing weird. Physical or anything like that. Oh. Just two people who were who I know each other. were really on some all right let's see if this is going if this, yep. if this is going to grow into something he came to my house mm -hmm. when he came to my house i had a three bedroom oh two and a half bath townhome he was in a studio this now, we just makes good money holy shit in, in order of how it happened so sometimes some of the things i'm probably going to insert what i was thinking and the mistake i made okay. Turn this off. No. Okay, so okay. um and i say that to say that i did not realize inviting him to my home would be an issue um probably made his eyes go oh shit she's a keeper yep. she got this three bedroom two yep. and a bad townhouse and i'm in like a little studio yep. yeah let me let me take let advantage me of that this. what yep. i need to do to quarantine here the decision was made quarantine at my house so we, the state went on lockdown mm -hmm. he came and stayed with me um in my home and for the most part it was good. in the fine. initial beginning it was fine it was it was fine the reason why i hesitate is because i grew up in the church mm -hmm. so for me it was really like an internal struggle of Bruh, you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband. And now you live in what to do and yep. he ain't your husband. Like it was it was a struggle for me. Internally, yeah. Because I knew better. And I, and don't come for me. I'm just telling you the way I grew up, it was like that it was not sitting yeah, right. Yeah. But at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not want to. So there we go. Um so he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. Mm -hmm. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my house stuff. Just house stuff. He paid the rent because my rent at the time was less than a thousand dollars. Oh. Um, he paid the utility bills, and and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, mm -hmm. I was like, Ooh. wow, okay, so you got money. Yep. Um, <laughs> and so he paid he paid all Ooh. the household bills. So my check really was just taking care of everything else. And yeah. And I am not. This is where it's not gonna make me look good, but it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. And so I kind of pushed to the side the fact that, yeah, you're shacking up because it's like, but your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like mm -hmm. he's, he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes. Yep. So this is still March. Mm -hmm. So we're living together and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning. He's helping to cook and clean. And then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him? Probably not. Or is he going to buy a house where it's for us because we are going to try to make this thing work be official get married have a family yeah so the question now on the table is what's going on with what the house because yeah. i didn't want to stay in um riverdale georgia i did not want to raise a family there i refused to have a baby um in clayton county so the decision was made let's start looking for a house for both of us mm -hmm. remember he was already looking for a house yes he was yeah but then he was like you know what we're I'm together i'm gonna marry you let's look for a, for a, a family home for the two of, of the bad, yeah. He was like, this is how much I was approved for. That's when he showed me the Chase paperwork. Um, it was a letter stating that he, and it had the Chase emblem at the top. He showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700. And All right, who Wait. did I marry? Part two. So we both- um, This could work, hold on. What it is that we wanted. We both had established, we were- Never mind, I can't work. <laughs> part four. So we go to Home Depot, we go to Lowe's. I'm choosing all these appliances. He's taking pictures of this of the um, the SKU number. We have representatives helping us, and he basically explains to them, "Hey, we're, we're buying a house. Mm -hmm. uh, we should be closing sometime in June. Can we order this stuff now? Can I have can a couple of yeah. hold on it? Like, mm -hmm. what can we do? Because <clears throat> we're not ready for delivery." I stood there as the Home Depot rep said, "We can hold it in our warehouse. Like, you can buy something and we can hold it. Mm -hmm. People do it all the time. I didn't know that. With COVID. Here I am for figure this out. So I, I watched him pay. Um, I want to say it was about three or it was either three fifty or five hundred. I watched him pay a deposit on a whole new set of appliances for them, and they were going to hold it mm -hmm. until we were ready for delivery. Yeah, I watched this, so I was like, okay, okay, good deal. Like we got the appliances. Next, let's go to Rooms to Go and Ashley Furniture and find um, everything else. Actual yeah. furniture. So we went all around Rooms to Go. We went to Ashley Furniture. We went to American Signature. And I, I furniture so expensive. All these things furniture is so expensive, again, especially rugs and stuff. Pictures of it. He was like, I can go online and order it. I don't think anything of it because again, I just saw that we held the appliance. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's that's fine. Um, so April turns into May. 
May 2020 comes. Mm -hmm. um, this is where things start to get a little weird. Interesting. Off. Yeah. May comes and obviously we had not done inspection. Mm. And I'm asking him all the time, what's, so what's the deal with the house? He was like, well, because of COVID, they're trying to get someone to do the inspection. But the guy that they had, it was always some, something. The guy that yeah. had caught COVID, so they're going to have to get somebody else. And, and he's like, he's like, and he's lucky they even had COVID around because he could have that as an excuse to not do things. Because COVID, 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 oh, this person has COVID, or they can't lose because of COVID, like, or they're too backed up because of COVID. Because a lot of things like that happened to me as well, where if I want like an appointment or something, we're like, oh, we're held back because of COVID, or a nurse got COVID, or someone, a patient here got COVID. So that was very common, like when COVID's still around when we were first going through it, of course. 15 houses backed up, so it'll be a while. Because that was like so normal, point, so uh, there's May, no red flags yet. In this point, in May of 2020, I started recording the broke receipts. Um, audio diaries. I don't know why. I, it was some something just something made was telling her. Yeah, phone. something was like, girl, you better record everything. Them, and I would, I would save them by the date, and um, I would just start talking about what's going everything, on. Everything, yeah. So I was like, I knew, I knew there was something. Something was nagging me. But like, you could have put your finger on it, yeah. There's things like, like that where you can't I like tell, but you can't like, like you know something, but you, you saw, can't put your finger on it. This is what I reminded myself. You saw him pay for the appliances. You know the house is under contract. Mm -hmm. You know that he told you that um, he's the one who put the house under contract. She thinks she's paranoid, basically. Like, I remember she, she thinks she's paranoid. Why would he lie about that? This is so easy to verify. She thinks she's, she's paranoid. She's that? like, I'm just paranoid. You caught him in any other lie. And at the time, the answer was no. At the time. Um. So I really was like... Maybe you just aren't used to a guy who actually does what he's supposed to do. Like, I, I was questioning myself. She's gaslighting herself. She was gaslighting herself. So, Liars have you questioning everything. Didn't happen. Around mid-May, I found out I was pregnant. Ooh. May 2020. When I found out I was pregnant, he was ecstatic, and I was like, oh, shit. The reason why I was, oh, shit, is because, number one, I'm plus size. Number two, because of my age, I was... Do you I, I think like it's called? Or something, person. yeah. Um, and I wasn't married. And that... Nagged. I cannot tell y'all how much I have a question too, so I know what you're saying. <coughs> struggle in between. My family didn't even know that he had moved in at this point. And I just pregnant. Them, you know, that I was pregnant. Um, went to the doctor. Everything looked good. Um, good. But again, because it was COVID, he couldn't go in with me um, into herself. the actual room. So, you know, doing any sort of ultrasound, doing the blood test, because my HCG levels were really high. So the doctor was like, hey, it might be twins. We don't know yet. Ooh, um, so what are we scared? Of, you know, along. I kind of went twins, um, but that's still scary. They gave me a due date. Due date was January 26th of 2021. The baby's um, two, I think. So or three? Yeah. Uh, May, found out I was pregnant. So there was now more of a push into the house and house. all that. Yep. We got to get the fuck up out of here. I'm not having a baby in Riverdale. Okay. Nothing against Riverdale, but I ain't having a baby in Riverdale. So. We, we need to we need to find Herbie out what's going on get him one yep and so he was very he was on top of it he had an answer for everything of course he did um he was like you know i'm gonna call and find out what's going on blah 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 um he then magically told me about a week later oh they're going to do inspection on the on the house mm -hmm. like in two days so i was just like okay keep in mind I'm, I'm taking his word for it i'm taking his word for all yep. this so he's like they're going to do an inspection um once we get the inspection report back then we will know what you know what we are going to be responsible for what, what are we getting ourselves into so um, <laughs> I guess they did an inspection. He showed me an inspection report. Um, Sounds oh, like they, they didn't. They said that the roof has recently been replaced, which he, I remember he was very happy about. Mm -hmm. um, and the issues that they that there were for the house were minor. It was not. It was not a bad because we did have a discussion about it. He was like, "It's not, not it's bad. something that we can't handle." Then he said that we were set to close um, the end of May. We were set to close the end of May. He told mm -hmm. me it was going to be a virtual closing. Oh, okay. You're probably like, what the hell is a virtual closing? Because again, he's saying because of COVID, people are not closing in the office. Mm -hmm. They're doing a virtual closing where um, you would need to electronically sign the mm -hmm. paperwork. This is what he's okay. telling me. I mean, that, makes so, that sounds like it makes sense. Like, we're set to close like just before Memorial Day. And so, for some reason, again, Ooh. there's still that nagging mm -hmm. part. For some reason, mm -hmm. I didn't start packing. Oh. I, anyone that knows me will tell you I hate moving. I've Same. I've done enough in my life. I hate moving. I only got like three dollars. I not packing up that house at all. I was just like, you know... I'm pregnant. My body was changing so fast. That Makes sense, like, yeah. I can barely keep my eyes open half the day. Um, and so, no, I didn't start packing. And I remember I did record, again, I was recording audio diaries just about every day. Mm -hmm. When something didn't sit right, she was recording. I would verbally record it in the audio diary because I was like, I don't something's know right, what not it right. is, yep. but there's something. Something's not right, yep. That was the theme of our relationship. I don't know what it is, but, there's but something I there. know there's yep. something. Um, and so, I remember talking to myself in my little prayer closet, because that's where I would do my recordings. <laughs> and I remember thinking... What if he what if we don't get this house like what if we don't get what if he's lying i don't think that they did but again, i have a feeling they didn't get that house of, why would he lie about this like who makes up a house? that they're buying a house when in fact they're not and then he's showing you all this paperwork like, so you can trust it yeah 
that she's gaslighting herself i have a feeling they didn't even believe what's in front of you i got a feeling she ain't got right. a house so i got a feeling okay part five who the fuck did i marry so i'm questioning all this stuff in my head out loud on my audio diaries and then once again i'm like but look at what she look at what he's giving you like he's paying he, it wasn't a question about money mm -hmm. it was just a question of are we really are we really about to move into this house and <clears throat> keep in mind he's paying all the household bills he's yeah is. so did you stressing it we were supposed to close before Memorial Day. We I feel like they didn't. There was an excuse. There was always an excuse with him. Always an excuse. Of course, he's lying. And I didn't know enough about the process to question stuff because I really wasn't. Well, I don't get all liars is. Like, as a kid, right, you can lie and pull the fast one on your parents. But a grown-ass man, like, you knew you were going to get that fucking house. Like, you, you weren't going to be able to, like, pull the house out of your ass. And you knew this. So, and I know, like, pathological liars aren't thinking rationally. But it's like, my good guy. My man. Sir. Like, if it's not going to happen, just say that. Cause it's like, and I'm trying to put logic on someone that has no fucking logic, probably. But it's like this poor lady, but she still th thought something was up. She still thought something was up. But the thing is that, like, why even lie? Like, it was obviously gonna come up. Same thing with like women that I've seen. I haven't seen this in a minute, but women that they were like fake pregnancies. Baby, in nine months, either there's a baby or there's not. So it's like, what's the thought? What's the thought process? Like, what was like? And I get it. It was during COVID, so that's even more of the fact why she didn't catch up to the lies quicker. But I just, I don't know what the logic was. Like, what, what was the logic? What was the, what, what was the logic? behind it because i know that lying that lie doesn't have logic but there was a, there was a story he told himself in his head what what was the end goal there like what was he like i can't wait to hear what in the world maybe she doesn't know either because like god knows she probably didn't ask him but what was she like what was she gonna what was he gonna say like now she they're not getting a house so what and thank god she didn't like give up the house and stuff let's imagine another homeless congrats so let's hear let's hear it but i just i hate liars bro he wasn't involved the way i should have been and it was giving me a lot of anxiety so i'm pregnant with a lot of anxiety which is a problem um, for the fetus and if, push, if i'm be 100 percent honest with y'all i was not expecting that i was probably going to have a healthy pregnancy because i was all the stress yeah and what i was stressed about is i didn't know what was going on because i wasn't really involved but she was looking myself yeah a normal relationship would be involved yeah just being honest um she could have left so that up to him loki yeah around we move now into june it's okay. now going into June. Around June 5th, I looked at the house again on Realtor. It's gone. I don't know what made me do it other than... Someone's moved in. I promise you. I know that people are like, you know, you may or may not believe in God, but I'm telling you... I God told her to look. God told her to look. Probably yep. the Holy Spirit was like, look, look at that house yep. on Realtor.com. So I looked at the house on Realtor.com. Someone bought that thing. This was around June 5th. It showed that the house was off the market. Someone bought it. Yep. And I remember being like, okay, wait, what, is, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Because ex-husband is telling me we're about to close yep. the house. We're about to close. It's our house. Yep. We got furniture. Da -da 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 -da. Yep. Yep. Um, he's also telling me that he's been in contact with the realtor, his friend, mm -hmm. who was telling him, you know, this is what was happening next. Here's mm -hmm. what's going on. So the guy that we initially worked with apparently is completely out of the picture. But again, I was not heavily involved. So I'm just like, let me look at the house. I see it's off market. It's so, so. What the fuck does off market mean? Like so. now I'm really freaking out. So it shows the name of the real estate agent. It's not the guy that they were talking to? The seller. I don't remember her name. I called her. And I said, they know what the man is, probably. You know, excuse me. I said, my husband and I, even though I wasn't married, my husband and I were looking at this house at 123 Main Street. And we really wanted to tour it, but now I'm showing it's off market. Is it not available? Or, you know, I, I pulled that card. And she was mm -hmm. like, oh, no, ma'am. Um, the home closed yesterday. Ooh. It closed June 4th. Again, there's certain dates I just remember. Um, and I said, oh, it closed June 4th? I was like, really? My heart. Oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> The lights are unraveling already. Like, um, the lights are already fucking unraveling. sold the house, and I was like, oh, man, okay. Well, I said, my husband and I really wanted, you know, we love the pictures of it, and we're getting ready to start a family, so I would have loved to have been able to, you know, have the opportunity. To see it, at least, yeah. To see it. I asked her something. I don't remember the specific question I asked her, mm -hmm. and I don't even, I, I know why I asked the question, because I was anticipating that my boyfriend at the time was going to have some sort of excuse. Mm -hmm. So I asked her Makes something sense. about the buyers. Yeah. And I remember, I, and somehow... Again, forgive me, I don't remember the question mm -hmm. I asked her. But the answer was that it was an older white couple. Okay. Older white couple. So I get off the phone with her. I record an audio diary. And in the audio diary, weird. I specifically say, okay, there is no house. Nope. He's going to have to get out of this lie. Somehow, yep. Because now I realize, at the very least, he was lying about one thing. Um, him being the one who was under contract. Yep. I knew enough about that. So I was like, what... Um, how is he going to get out of this? Right. Because I've listened to the audio diary in 2024. I literally said in the audio diary, how is he going to get out of this? How is he get out of this lie? And I was trying to think of ways on how he's going to do it. And something said to me, because I say it on the audio diary, I said, um, he's going to say it's a bad deal. And he's going to say Ooh. he wants to pull out. Pull out is already sold, babe. You can't pull out. So I had a decision to make 
as ugly as this decision was. I'm she decided to stay. Decision. Yep. You're about to have a baby with this man. Yep. You gotta stay. He's paying all the household bills. Yep. He alive. I'm gonna stay. Yep. And that's what I did. I purposely made the decision. The lamb got I knew he was going to come back, and I knew he was going to give me some bullshit. But at least you're ready. I wish you was ready. The house, because he didn't know that I knew that house is already sold. The house is already sold. Um. And this is the part where I said, I'm gonna be honest, even though it's gonna make me look bad. Because most women in their right mind would have would have been like, yep, oh, out. yep. But listen, and I didn't. I'm pregnant, so, it's a lot of things. Um, Religion. Sure enough, he came home. He didn't really say anything that day. She and waited. I asked him about the house. She had to wait, of course, yes, of course, yes. He said, my friend, the realtor, um, he was like, I'm talking to him. He says about the deal. Yep. Something's going on with the interest rate. And when he said that, I felt so much relief because I knew. That I have been prepared for, he's gonna give you some bullshit. Yep. So when he said there's something with the interest rate, I said, you know what? If the interest, this is literally what I said, y'all. If the interest rate isn't good, then we shouldn't move there. We should probably let this house go. And she knew it was old. Whatever furniture we we ordered or you know appliances, and let's just look for another house. I said I would like to be moved before she gives birth. The year. I said I well, really don't want to be months pregnant, moving into a house. I would like I would like to be done with this before she got to baby yeah and he was he the way i said it was so calm and he was like okay he was like, okay. Like, mm -hmm. i'm gonna call the friend the get it together yeah and tell him i'm backing out of the house and i'm gonna see if i can get my earnest money back and i remember looking at him i was standing in the kitchen and i cocked my head to the side and i said okay get your earnest money back get the shit back and let's find another house and so that's how that first house fell through so um, the first house was through. Looking, I keep looking at this to see how much time I have because you know they only give you ten minutes. So this is part five, part six is coming up. But I don't know where she's going, but it's a long, it's a long trip. trip. <laughs> Which is mid June. I was at work, um, and I started cramping. Oh started. god. Um, and at this point, my doctor, I had just had an ultrasound mm -hmm. earlier that day, so I went to work. Now I'm nervous. Was, was fine. I went to work. And the cramping and the bleeding started. Oh, God. And I started crying because I, I kind of knew what was going on. Oh, God. And, um... All the stress, too. So, you know, she's getting lied to. That when they did an the ultrasound, they did not see a heartbeat. So, she was like, this pregnancy is not going to be viable. Fuck, bro. So, I'm crying hysterical. And now we're going to get into part six. Okay. Part six. One second. Let's get our stuff. stuff. Okay. So... It okay, has to play. And then we put it back. Okay. Uh, she's finally where she's going. So... Hair looks nice. And my heart so breaks at this news um, that she just got. I called and told me there was no heartbeat. The pregnancy was not viable at that point. And I was cramping and spotting at work. It's a miscarriage. Went to my best friend's office and immediately started crying. She was like, what's going on? And I said, um, I told her what the doctor said. And she grabbed her keys, grabbed her purse, and was like, let's go. I'm taking you home. On my way home, I called my boyfriend and told him what the doctor said. And he was like, I'll meet you at home. So he was coming from Duluth, went straight home. Um, and so about 24, 48 hours later, I had a doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. And my doctor gave me three options. First option, let everything happen naturally. Oh, God. God. We'll expel the fetus. Of course. Time. Second option, you can take a pill, which will induce expel. That can be a little quicker. The whole process will be a little quicker. will cause you to mm -hmm. expel. Mm -hmm. expel. The third option was to go into the hospital and do a DNC. I did not want to do a DNC because I did not want to be in the hospital with COVID going on. Yeah, that's um, understandable. And for whatever reason, I did not do the option of let it happen naturally. So I chose to do the pill. His birthday was um, June 17th, my ex's boyfriend, excuse me, my ex's birthday was June 17th, mm -hmm. so the decision was made, we're going to celebrate his birthday, that and day, then go out to eat, um, and then that night I would take the pill, because we both were off from work the mm -hmm. next two days, next two or three days. So, um, went out to eat, tried to celebrate as best we could, and then took the pill that night. That night was the most traumatic, oh, God. pain I've ever put my body through. Um, I do not recommend any woman, if prayerfully you don't have to go through that, but I don't recommend taking that pill. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard going to the hospital and doing the DNC thing is... Easier, not that any of that is easier, but just crying in so much pain. I couldn't take. They gave me a narcotic. I couldn't take it because it was. I found out I was allergic to it. So it was oh fuck! Like projectile vomiting. Oh god! It, it, it was a mess. So it was already a, pro a, a traumatic um, thing, and then was right there. to be vomiting is insane. That he needed to take me to the ER, but in the morning she was better. Subsided. So about seventy-two hours later, I had another doctor's appointment where the purpose of this appointment was to do an ultrasound mm -hmm. to see if everything had passed. Everything did not pass. Oh so god! Because of that, my doctor was like. We're going to have to do a DNC. Fuck. Um, my DNC was scheduled for the first week of July. My boyfriend, my ex, was going to take me. Um, that was always the plan. Two days before my procedure, he tells me. He can't. He tells me that he is up for promotion. Okay. He's up to, he's up to be promoted to VP. Mm -hmm. Because of this, the president of the company, <coughs> excuse me, is coming in. And it was going to be this huge business meeting he had. Mm -hmm. 
um, the business meeting was scheduled for the day of my surgery. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing a fit. Of course, I, what the, you know, you, you just tell them that you can't. Meeting, like, I need you to take me to the hospital and all this other stuff. And so he offered to have his sister. No, nah, just tell him you can't go. Like, there's a huge thing that's going on in your life. His sister lived in Douglasville. I was like, no, because I've never met her. Like, I'm not, I know, I'm not having a stranger take me Right, like, might as well go with myself at that point. Situation. I don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. So my aunt was going to, had offered to take me. And then my friend who took me home from work had offered to take me. Mm -hmm. She had options, good. So at that point, um, we get into an argument because mm -hmm. it's like my sister is, you know, you. you but that's a stranger, and what? She's, she's like, a stranger. Because I don't know her. Period. Period. Like, I don't know her. what's the? So, she's a stranger. So my friend offers to take me to the hospital because I was all distressed. That I mean, I don't even know her, and I got it. That's a stranger. That's a like huge thing she's going through. He can't take me. So I remember being on I seventy five, on the connector, on the phone with her, crying because I, I was so embarrassed that he wasn't going to be the one to take me, and that I was needing to rely on someone else to take me to mm -hmm. the hospital in order to get a DNC done. And she was really great. She was like, girl, this is why you have a village. Like, exactly, you need a village. Things happen. Yep. The world is crazy right now. Yep. I will take you. You're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So he did not take me to the hospital. Um, Insane, by the way. Did. She could not stay because of COVID protocol. Of course. Um, so when they wheeled me into... She was by herself. After I got checked in, I texted him and was just letting him know, hey, here's the update. I'm about to, you know, I'm in pre-op. Mm -hmm. They're going to get me prepared to go back um, to surgical ward or whatever. And the response I got was I'm nervous. From his new executive assistant. Oh. Now, when he told me he was up for the promotion, he did tell me that part of getting this new job would be that he would get an executive assistant. So I'm going to guess David is him. Assistant. I'm going to go ahead and guess David is him. I'm just going to guess. He did tell me, I'm going to make sure that I inform David if you get a text from this number, meaning from me, um, we'll let me know. The meeting. Yeah. You know, she's, my fiance is having um, a procedure done and I'm picking her up. So it's important that you come get me if it's something serious. Okay. So I text him, David responds. I don't think David's real, said, yeah, but, but here we are. Baba told me that um, you're going through something. You are having a procedure done. Mm -hmm. If you need me to get him, I can go get him. He's in a meeting. Just let me know what you need. And I just said, no, don't bother him. I'm just giving an update that they're about to take me back. And David responds. David. Says, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. So I have the procedure. I wake up and I'm now in recovery. Mm -hmm. I should be in recovery 45 minutes up to an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. I wake up. First thing I ask, and I remember asking. If he's there. Where is so-and-so? The nurse she wasn't was there. So sweet. You know, she was like, everything went well. Um, you're doing great. She said, we spoke to your fiance. But he's not he's there. His way. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, you know, okay. okay. Toes back out. Maybe he's, you know, in traffic or something. Going on. I just could not keep my eyes open to save my life. So I hear her talk to the other nurse. Ooh. And that's when she said, yeah, um, Dr. So-and-so called her fiance and his executive assistant picked up. Oh. And the executive assistant said that he was in a business meeting and that, um, you know, you could relate to him what you need to say and he'll you know tell okay mr which is he'll tell the fiance and my doctor was like hell no <laughs> hippa um oh that's true yeah so hippa what if i get hippa fiance called it did help get her little baby girl 30 minutes later holy sh and the doctor informed him she'll be ready to be discharged in about an hour you know you can make your way and come pick her up mm -hmm. he said he was on his way he was on his way from duluth to atlanta which is not a huge distance but the time of day one thing about atlanta there's always traffic, traffic. yeah so he should have been there within the hour yeah she wasn't. She's only been in recovery an hour and a half. She wasn't. I'm gonna go ahead and guess. Let's go to the next part. Okay, first up. So I just want to clear up some oh, things that okay. I realized. I'm ready. Um, Clarification. So just allow this video to serve as a stop sign. Let's clarify. First of all, the story. Back mm -hmm. up. He was born in Philly, raised in Philly, and moved to Augusta. The, the story is that he moved to Augusta for high school. Mm -hmm. For high school, he went to college at San Diego State. Yes. Enjoyed San Diego State. He did the football thing game. Mm -hmm. For quite a while. Um, got married in out in California, had a house in California, played arena football out in California, but his family was back here in Augusta, Georgia. Yes, Georgia. He still had a lot of family up in Philly, but for the most part, he had a sister in Augusta, he had a sister in Douglasville, he had a brother in Baltimore, he had another brother in Philly, and he had um, a brother in Nashville. So I just want to clarify that in terms of um, the demographic, not the demographics, but the geography. Mm -hmm. Born in Philly. Yes. Came to Augusta for high school. Yep. Went to San Diego State for college. Yep. Played football. Stayed in San Diego. Excuse me. Stayed at San Diego. Got married out there, but still had quite a bit of family here in Augusta. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, here in Georgia. Um, he also had a sister, I think I said, who lived in Douglasville. I have physically met his aunt, who lived in Augusta. I mm -hmm. met his brother, who lives in Augusta. Um, I have spoken on FaceTime with a brother who lives in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will demonstrate how he used to talk to the brother that lives in Philly. That's coming up. You haven't missed that. In terms of the proposal, you did not miss the story of the proposal. Okay. I simply didn't want to share it because it was embarrassing. Oh. Basically, he gave me three ring options. Okay. I went to a jeweler at the Mall of Georgia. Mm -hmm. He had me pick out three rings. I told him which one I liked the most because I knew it wasn't a, a romantic proposal at all. I knew which ring I liked the most. I told him which one. He, he basically said, when I'm ready, I'll give you the ring. Okay. And I'll propose. Oh. 
fast forward um about i guess it was summer because i was actually pregnant when the ring came mm. we were sitting at the dinner table he took the ring and box out of his pocket slams it on the dinner table and i was like what is this he that's it i opened it inside was the ring that i had wanted um that i chose i don't like that and he was like all right so this means that you're gonna be my wife I don't like that. I just don't like that. What? Again, when I ask y'all giving grace, it's because there's certain things that's just like... It's okay. Oh, Listen, thinking. girl, it's okay, but... <sighs> what the... F what? There's no excuse. He really said... So there was never... Like, he's giving you a phone. It was more of a... What? We're living together. We're having a baby together. Let's just do this to get out of the way? Because the backstory also was that his dad was a retired police officer, but at one point his father was a pastor. Cool, but like, so still, it's like... The Bible, like nobody's business. That's what cool, I'm but like, that's still like... So, can look... Ooh. Okay, that eight. That eight. That eight. I don't like that though. That feels icky. I don't know why that feels icky to me. That just feels icky. That proposal is just icky. Like, what do you mean? Like, that he had a sister who lived close, but he's from Philly, so I just wanted to definitely bring clarity to what. I mean, I got family everywhere too, so that just makes sense, yeah. Born in Philly, came to Augusta for high school. Went to California for foot, um, college, played football at San Diego State. I didn't question it because I have family all over the place, like it's fine. Uh, worked at Apple. I got people coming in Puerto Rico, DR, California, I think Europe, like different states here in America, like. California, um, and he told me he got divorced in California. That is important as well. That will come up again later. Um, he got divorced in Cali, okay, but that will come up. So maybe I'll be a lie. So, this point in time, or. The time that I'm telling you, part seven, which is the last video I just posted. Mm -hmm. The ex wife lived in California. California. Two kids, his mm -hmm. two uh, step kids. Steps. The two step kids were. 17 and 20 or 21 mm, okay. were that age group, that age group. Okay. and he was saying that he was very close with them so he the step is the one that came out the the boy i think was the one that came out to like say that he has a pathological liar i am out this moment to do a lot i'm pretty sure it that was the day. person that came out i think the kid when I well, girl man he was 20 when and like this was years ago when i say that he talked to someone it means that he he was on the phone in front of me talking to the person i hope that because i will touch back on this but he, he wasn't was on a speaker he was just on the phone yeah in front of me talking to the person so he talked to his siblings daily he talked to his aunt daily almost every day he talked to his family the way i talked to my family almost every day um and again i will demonstrate how he used to do the phone calls i will also I'm demonstrate how he used to do the work phone calls because i've heard about the work phone calls and the family call calls so i'm excited he would talk to people friends and stuff oh people in the background he really sold it bro he really sold it damn man sold it but i wanted to bring this video just to clarify some stuff Hopefully this helps. And um, honestly, I hope, I know people are fascinated by this, but more than anything, I hope that there's a woman watching this. Take notes. She's saying to herself, okay, it's time for me to ask some questions. Yeah, exactly. I'm hoping too, because, because we're going by eight. Who the fuck did I marry? So we submitted an offer on the house in Smyrna. I oh. sent it over to the <laughs> realtor, and the next day comes. Oh so my God. So <laughs> phone call. So he calls us and tells us that the offer was not accepted. Can we go to the bathroom for still listening? Builder it's giving us on, my bad. <laughs> We don't exactly know um, why. Uh, we don't exactly know why he didn't accept it, but the bottom line is that we figured out later on that he didn't want to finish the basement. So the offer was not accepted. The house fell through. I was okay with that because, again, I knew he had put in an offer. So we continued looking at other houses. We found another house um, in Smyrna that he really liked. Um, I thought that it was way too big for just the two of us, um, and so the price of this home was much higher than the seven hundred and fifty thousand that Chase. Had approved for the mortgage so what he explained to me was that he was willing to do the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage and he was also willing to put a significant amount of the money and savings on the house which meant that he was now comfortable going from seven hundred and fifty thousand up to about nine hundred thousand again his, his whole explanation was i have the money where i can put down a substantial down payment bring down the price of the home and then basically mortgage the rest of it so that was not the plan i was not comfortable with a home <laughs> over nine hundred thousand dollars which is um, crazy it sounds insane keep in mind, this is crazy numbers chase paperwork so i was like i just feel more comfortable sticking Ooh, sorry. that's what you're approved for let's go with that. yeah because that was a crazy number by this point this is now fall of 2020 um we have been talking about marriage i had my ring um he had me which he had the company and again he was calling me every day from work yep um the, I need to kind of explain how the company was ran. I was going to say something, but let me not. Let me not, let me not spoil it. He would be in an office. Yeah. It was a condiment company, so they actually were producing the condiments. And I'm not saying the name of the company on purpose, but they were producing the condiments um, in this particular plant location. So a lot of times, he would simply tell me that he walked the floor um, checking in with his subordinates, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, how did he go to work? For the most part, at this point, he left before I woke up. 
Okay. However, pretty much he wore dress pants, um, kind of like a, deep, a dark navy blue cargo pant. And he had a polo shirt with the company logo on it. What I saw a lot of times is that he would not wear the polo shirt to work. He would wear like a company t-shirt. Mm -hmm. He would wear rubber sole shoes. And Makes sense. see um, navy blue cargo pants. Okay. I Makes didn't sense. think it was a uniform, but it definitely, it reminded it me of what someone would wear when I worked at Amazon. If you're going to be doing manual labor. Yeah. He didn't go to work sloppy looking at all, but it definitely was not suit and tie. Nowhere near suit and tie. Um, it is fair to note that outside of work, he was a man who he loved to dress. Mm -hmm. He loved to wear the latest Jordans. He loved to collect watches. He collected a lot of Invicta watches. Um, Invicta, hold on. He, he loved to collect hats. He wore hats, baseball caps everywhere because he didn't like the shape of his in <laughs> um, So in terms of how he dressed casually, the man, he could dress. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how he dressed for work, Let me see how he dressed like a vegan. Oh, okay. But his excuse was, They're pricey. I'm constantly walking. They're nice looking. They're pricey. Production floor. They're like 30, 80 bucks, the floor, 70, the 40. They're pretty though. So by this point, again, this is fall. We're still looking at houses. Um, They're nice we're still looking. touring houses as much as we can because it is COVID. Um, we had found another house that we really liked and a house that I really, truly wanted to put an offer in on. Mm -hmm. This was now going to be the second house that we put an offer on. He put in the the asking price, I believe, was about 700000 He put in under asking um, an offer for about 650000 I'm guessing, but I'll try to find the house and put it on the, exactly. story, put it on yeah. the story. Um The reason that that house fell through we found out that the home was sitting on a septic tank. Ooh. We found out that the septic no. tank had an issue, and it would have taken about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars nah. to fix the septic tank. Nah. The sellers were not willing to fix the septic that's tank. That's a no. Personally, I didn't really care for the house that much. Yeah, that's a no. Was like, I don't really want it. Yeah, that's a no. So even though we put an offer in, we had twenty four hours where we could uh, pull like, our what it. Yeah, no, that's a no. We Once we found out, I believe it was in the disclosure. And if you're a realtor, please feel free to tell me if I'm using the wrong terminology. But I believe it was in the disclosure that they told us the septic tank needs to be replaced. That's crazy. That's, that's a no. Like, yeah, no. I don't, I don't want that house. Um, so we pulled out, the house fell through. And so I was fine with it because again, I was heavily involved. I saw him sign the offer. I knew every step of what was going on. Our real estate agent, Scott was amazing, but you will see him when I get to it, where he made a mistake as a real estate agent. Okay. So house number two fell through. Um, we then moved on, saw a few more houses. Mm -hmm. and then we get to house number three. Okay. I'm going to pause talking about the houses because now I need to introduce what happened with the cars. Okay. All right. Part nine. Part nine of who the fuck did I marry? So we're pausing on the house stuff. Mm -hmm. For a second. Yeah. Car. So when I met my ex-husband, I was driving a 2012 Nissan Rogue, mm. um, fully loaded. It had quite a few miles on it, but it, it got me from A to B. It was, in a, it was in good condition, but I was upside down in the car. He was driving a 2018 Ford Taurus, um, super, uh, sport mode. I know he had a sport mode on the car and I love driving that car. Um, when he told me how he was a regional manager, he told me that one of the perks that came with the job the car? was that he would be getting a company car. Oh. And so... We spent time going to Range Rover of South Atlanta. Um, we spent time going to Jaguar. Oh. We spent time going to BMW. We spent time going to uh, Ford, which was on Mount Zion in Morrow, if you all are familiar with that area. Hmm. He test drove a whole lot of cars. In the end, he decided on a BMW sedan. Oh, I was there okay. when he test drove the car. I got in the car with him. I loved it. Um, and he explained to the salesperson, you know, I'm getting a company car. Company car I yeah. need to get a printout of the full price of the car, tax, tag, and title. Because what my company is going to do is wire over yeah. the money. Oh, the wire. Mm -hmm. The salesperson was like, okay, you know, apparently apparently that happens a lot. Okay. So he gave him a printout with the tax tag and title for the car. Um, in front of me and the salesperson, he called the person in the finance department mm -hmm. for his job. Okay. Obviously, I have no idea what this person's name is. But he called the person. He explained to them, this is the amount of money. He mm -hmm. said the president of the company, so-and-so, has authorized for him to get a car, not spending more than, I think, 90000 tax tag and title. Okay. The BMW came out to just under 90000 Okay. Um, and so he, I remember this conversation so fucking vividly. So he, he's on the phone. In front, I'm, saying, I'm sitting down. The salesperson's sitting down at their desk. Mm -hmm. And he's like, they, you know, they put me on hold. And so he's like, he... I guess the person comes back and he says, um, yeah, the, the price of the car is blah, blah, blah. He was like, give me a second and I can send you a picture okay. of that printout that mm -hmm. shows tax tag and title for the BMW. He gets off the phone. He takes a picture of it. Mm -hmm. He sends it to whoever. Who knows? He waits about 10 minutes. He calls the person back. He says, did you get it? Apparently the person did get it. But the person who can, who can actually there. physically do the wire transfer Isn't there. had gone home. For I thought minute. so. So what he says to um, the BMW salesperson, he's like, okay, we're going to have to do this tomorrow because so-and-so went home for the day. I don't know who the salesperson is. I can only tell you from my viewpoint what I thought. I had no reason to not believe that this was happening. Yeah, this was a lie. 
I really didn't. Because again, you gotta keep, please keep in mind the circumstances that all of this is happening. We're inside the dealership. Mm -hmm. We're sitting at the desk of this yep. person. He gave us the printout. He's on the phone, do, you know, doing business, basically saying, look, I need, this is how much money the car is gonna cost. He's taking a picture of it. He seemingly is texting someone saying, this is how much, you know, this is proof of how much it is. Then he asked the BMW salesperson, I need your wire transfer information. The guy got up, rushed over to, I guess their finance area to get the wire, the bank wire information. Cause mm -hmm. obviously you have to wire it a certain kind of way rushes back over gives it to my ex-husband my ex-husband's like okay first thing in the morning we will get this wired over and then you know i'll come and pick up the car okay. my fiance me will drive me up here to pick up the car so we leave he felt like because at the time that this all happened i was pregnant so he felt like look we're about to have a baby i don't want you driving that nissan rogue okay i want to get you something up. i want to get you something more secure something new mm -hmm. i really wanted a kia <laughs> i really <laughs> wanted a kia tell you right um and he was like well let's let's look at the warranty this man knew a lot about cars he knew a lot about the warranty mm -hmm. he knew a lot about the depreciation value and so he did talk to me a lot about what will we get the most for our money okay Makes um, sense. We test drove, when I say we, I, I test drove a Kia Telluride, a Kia Sorento. He didn't like either of those. Oh. He had me test drive a Ford Explorer. He didn't really care for that. Then came time where he really wanted me to get a BMW. Um, he really wanted me That's to expensive. get a BMW X5. So he took me to B Global BMW Imports, which if you know anything about Atlanta, it's off of Cobb Parkway, but you can see it off, of, uh, off the highway. I believe 285 is where you can see the Global Imports BMW dealership. He took me there. He had me test drive an X5 and X6. Um, he also had me test drive a, uh, I think I'm gonna get the numbers wrong, a 525, which was a sedan. I did not like that. I wanted an SUV. SUV, yeah. Same. Um, I'm I looking for a new car, but I need to be so. He also had me drive an M series, test drive an M series. So he was very adamant that I should get a BMW. Beamer. The reason being is because, according to him, he had a BMW mm -hmm. in California when he lived in San Diego. He had a BMW that he loved. It was a white BMW. Okay. He showed me pictures of the BMW. So he showed me pictures of this white BMW that he had, and unfortunately, the car got totaled okay. about two months. Before he couldn't bring he it. To yeah. Georgia. Okay. So he had received um, money, not a lot, but some money to get another car, and he used it to get the Ford Taurus because he was like, "I just need a car that's going to get me yeah, from A to B, to B yeah. until I get into a house and I'm much more settled." For him, he was like, "I'm really giving myself 60 days to get settled here in Georgia after okay. moving from California." But then he met me. Mm -hmm. Again, that's the story. So he had me test drive the BMW. So much so, I loved the BMW. The BMW. Loved it. I wanted a dark blue BMW. I don't even know, know how much exterior. it is. It sounds very expensive. X5. It sounds I wanted an M series. So I can clearly tell y'all that's exactly the car I wanted. We were online looking for that particular car because not every dealership had it. I was okay with a black BMW if needed. Um, but I really wanted dark blue and I really wanted that cognac colored interior. So he felt like I want you to still, I want you to consider all of a sudden an Audi Q8. All Let's just see how you like it. If you don't really like it, then we will go back to the BMW. I cannot tell you why he switched up. I can't. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but I can Prices, tell you he maybe? took me to an Audi dealership on Peachtree Industrial. He test drove an Audi and I test drove an Audi Q8. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the Q8. Loved it, loved it, loved it. But I was tired of test driving cars. By this point, I had test drove she was a girl. so many cars. Um, our weekends were spent either looking at a house or, or test driving cars. And I was picky, I will admit that. So he had me test drive the Q8. I really liked it. I mean, you I have to be picky. Him, you gotta be in the car for a long time. You gotta be picky. Because I'm tired, of, I'm tired of test driving cars. He told my family he was buying me a new car because it, keep in mind, he had, well, not keep in mind, let me let y'all know. He had met my family mm -hmm. initially on Zoom. Oh, again, the COVID. Lockdown. He had met my family. On Zoom, um, yeah. He also had met my family in person because at this point, it was like, look, if you're not showing any symptoms, maybe we can do family dinner. Um, and so we had. So he had met my family in, in person. person. And now we will go ahead and move towards part 10 of this series. Okay. All right. So I think, I think on part 10, we're going to stop. We're going to start playing the game, I think. Yeah, it's nine minutes. We're gonna. That will be like eight something. I can't be bothered. I don't do that math in my head. Okay. Um. 10. But yeah. Who the fuck did I marry? Okay, it's forty parts. It's so fifty it's parts. So wait, it's, okay. it's fifty parts. So I know we're not gonna watch the whole thing today. That's why um I'm saying I'm gonna stop now after ten and then watch watch play the game um play Hollow Knight because I'm dying to play Hollow Knight um and then tomorrow or Friday when I random streaming again um we'll just tomorrow or Saturday um we'll watch. Look who it is! Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you snuck something in your food because the cost of miscarriage too. Honestly, honestly, it was so random. Everything was going fine. All of a sudden, anyway, let's not let's not speculate. Let me like a comment. Anyway, yeah, since it's been oh, I can't like it. What? Oh, I don't know how to use it with for PC. Anyway, um, at the end of everything, I might either post it on YouTube through, with parts like that, like one to ten, and then ten to twenty, and then it's fifty parts. It's gonna take us a minute, <laughs> and then um, one to ten, ten to twenty. 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and then 40 to 50. That's, what, that's how we're going to watch it. But yeah, I just want to preface that before we started towards 10. Um, 
hell, he even had me test drive a Nissan Murano, but the main two were BMW and an Ellie. He had told my grandfather he was giving me a car. He had told my aunt he told he was giving me a car. I don't think he did, but he going here we to, are. He, he was like, she's going to be my wife. I want her to be in something secure. So my family was really like, I don't do no cars you know, either. I only do use. Yeah. So I would have been like, whoa, you know, who knew that he had this kind of money? Right? Like, they don't. Okay. And so I hated the fact that he did that because anytime he got around my family, he was another red flag to put in, in the United Nations of red flags. United Nations of red flags. Like, and he would always brag. I never realized it in real time. But afterwards, I didn't realize yeah. it until I was out of the situation. He always bragged about the fact that he could fight, the fact that he had money, and the fact that he played football. Those are the three things he always bragged about. Back to the cars. So I told him, I was like, pick one between the BMW and the Audi because you said you're buying it. So pick one. Right. So this man shows the Audi. So he takes me to the dealership. I wanted a white Q8. He does the, give me the printout of how much it's going to cost, tax tag and title, to get this Q8. Gentleman who's helping us gives him the, the printout. He's saying he's going to pay this money mm -hmm. for the car out of the savings account that's that's offshore. That's the story. That's okay. what he's saying. So he apparently is asking the guy, you know, is there a holding fee? Mm -hmm. Can I pay a holding fee to secure this car while I'm working to get the money transferred? Because obviously with COVID, it's going to take long for the banks to transfer the money. Yeah. Side note, I need everyone to understand. One of the reasons why he was able to get away with the stuff he got away with is because we were on lockdown. It's yep. crazy because it's now 2024. Yep, I know it. But I don't know. Do we all remember how it seemed? It was a different time. It was a different time. It was a different time in 2020. It was a different time. Yeah. But it was a, everything not, changed. It was a different time. It was a different time. Yeah. Just was not happening. Nope. In 2020, at this time. Yeah, it was a different time. So when he said everything oh, stopped. Yeah. Take a while for the bank to transfer the money. The gentleman who was working at Audi did not even. He didn't make question it. No. He didn't blink. He was like, Okay. I know it took a while because of COVID. So basically, what ends up happening is we leave. He has the printout. He mm -hmm. calls the bank, or he calls his his um, financial advisor, who does have a name. The financial advisor's name is Eric. I feel comfortable using certain people's names, especially because they don't find out they didn't exist. They're not real. Um, they're not, they're not real. So he, calls Eric, <laughs> he tells Eric in front of me, in front of me, "Hey, I need to transfer seventy-two thousand five hundred and twenty. Whatever the car was, whatever yeah. the amount was, because I'm buying a car for my fiance. Mm -hmm. This is the bank account information. Do you need me to give it to you over the phone, or do you need me to email it to you? Pause. I can't hear what the person's saying, but that's what he would do." Do you need me to give it to you over the phone or can I email it to you? Okay. Okay. All right. Give me a few minutes and I'll go ahead and email it to you. All right. Let me know. I'll call you back to let you find out if you receive it. Okay. Hang up. There's someone on the phone. So I'm hearing this because again, I'm not paying attention There's to There's someone on the phone. Did I hear anybody on the other phone? Did I hear anybody on the other end? So he, um, he proceeds to type up an email, type up something, telling him this is the information that we mm -hmm. need. Um, I didn't think anything of it. He called me at work the next day to tell me that the money was sent okay. to Audi. That he called Audi and he confirmed with Audi that they received the money. Okay. What he told me is that the car is going to be um, delivered to the house. Y'all, it's not that I lived in a hood because I didn't, mm -hmm. but I did not live in an area of Clayton County where you would have a brand new Audi delivered. Just delivered, yeah, that's weird. That's so crazy. I remember saying to him, Just I don't like, want uh -uh. a car like delivered to the house, not yet, because I need to put that car in the garage. And my Nissan was, I only had a one car garage, so my mm -hmm. Nissan was in the garage. So he said, okay, well, let me call them back and change the delivery date. Can you be home or can you do a half day? Mm -hmm. So he's asking me, can you work a half day so that they can deliver the car? You should be there. Yeah. We'll be home for it. I said, yes, that's fine. Because again, it's COVID. I'm working from home anyway. Okay. Um, I only had to go in the office two days a week. Okay. So Makes sense. I, I'm at home the next day. He told me the car Waiting. will be delivered between the hours of one and three. I never got there, did it? <sighs> Obviously, between one and three, nothing happened. So three o'clock, I called him. Where's the he's car? at work. He sends me the voicemail. He calls me back. I said, it's three o'clock. I didn't, no one ever came with the car. Um, what's, what's going, going on? on? And then I remember I was like, well, do I need to call Audi myself? Right, because like, what's Cause going on? You handled it, but if you didn't handle it, let you me call. To call them. And so whenever I would, my thing is, my eyes were called. He would get very, very. Difficult. My thing is like, I don't know if maybe I'm two hands on, but my eyes would have called myself. Um, I would have called to make sure that I got the appointment right, which is first things first. That would have been like, but two is because of COVID, and she wasn't questioning it. But I would have been like, oh, like, and I'm not questioning anything. I was like, oh, I just want to like, uh, make sure I have the appointment right for us. Um, this day, one to two, yes. Just to make sure that I have the right the right dates. Like I would just call to confirm. I feel like that's not a weird thing to do. Um, but that would have just uncovered a lie because it would have been like, ooh. But I mean literally like when like an hour passed, I wouldn't have waited until three. When an hour passed, I would have been like, oh, where is car? But also like I still don't get what pathological liars get out of just lying. Like is it like joy? Is it is it fruitful? Is it making them happy? What's going on? Because like I can't I can't even fathom. Like clearly it wasn't gonna a car wasn't just gonna like what's it called? Um bring itself into the reality out of thin air she ha he had her ass this poor lady sit there waiting for the second time by the way the first was house and now a car 
I'm hoping the car makes it, but I don't think it's gonna make it. I don't think it's gonna make it. I don't think I don't think it's getting that car. Defensive red flag number four hundred and seventy-two. Yep. So he was like, "No, I will call Audi. Don't do anything. I'll call Audi and find out what's going on." That's already crazy. Okay. Defensiveness and I'll call. I'm chilling, cooking dinner, normal night. Mm -hmm. He calls me back and says, "Yeah, the car was stuck on the truck." Sure. In Spartanburg, because apparently that's where their deliveries come from. Sure. So when he told me this, I was in the kitchen laughing, because by this point, I will be honest, and I told y'all I'll be honest even when it makes me look bad. I was guilty of. I, on one hand, I believed him, and on the other she hand, didn't. I was like, "Let me see what lie he come up with." Let me just see. Damn, this poor um, girl. But keep in mind, my brain was really like not rationalizing, not comprehending how deep the lie was. Yep. I just thought that no one told him the car was going to be delivered, and he made yep. that up. I had no idea how deep the lie went. So he said, "You know, the car's in Spartanburg. Um, it should be delivered." Sure it is. Sure it is. For sure. The weekend came. He had a whole other. Yep. Excuse. Of course he did. Um, I don't remember what the exact excuse was as to why the car was never delivered. I do remember we got into an argument and I was like, don't even worry about it. I'm gonna get a new car my day. Right, like don't worry I don't about it. Need help. Which is probably one of the worst things you can tell a narcissist because right? like, they love to be the hero, you know, they it's, yep. it's all about them. But I was like, don't even worry about it. I'll get, when I, when I have the money to get a car myself, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. I don't wanna hear anything else about a new car. Right, like I I'll figure it out when I figure it out. About a car. Because at this point, I was Set up, way tired too much time with all this object. Yeah. Figure out, are we getting a car? Are, are we, we not? The house? Like, What's going on? What the fuck is going on? I forgot the house. I forgot the house was happening. Always there was an excuse. So when I told him, I don't wanna hear anything else about a car, and I am not going to a dealership to test drive another car. Um, that ended that whole discussion. Right of course, thank God. So this is what I'm. This is where I'm going to interject what I believe was happening. I believe that my ex-husband is the type of person he gets off uh, online. Uh, oh. He gets off on you being excited about something that he knows you will never get. So I believe that he enjoyed going to car dealerships. Yep. He enjoyed um, watching me test drive a car and yep. get excited about yep. it, knowing she's I'm not gonna get it. Going to yep. Get it. You're gonna be real it evil. Is the, it is the level You're gonna be of real evil. And again, I'm telling y'all stuff, stuff that I found out way later on. Yep. It is the level of cruelty you, yep. that I still cannot comprehend. That man was just a double period. I don't. That man was just the devil. I mean, like, and I was saying, I don't know what he's gonna get, like, what they get out of that. But honestly, just like getting joy out of seeing someone, like, want something so bad and have like that light in their eye. Because like when you want something, you have that light in your eye, and you know they're not gonna get it. You just have to be evil. You have to be just the evilest person in the world. I can't believe. I just honestly, she looks like she's happy and doing well. I just hope she's happy, she's doing well, and I hope she never falls into some shit again. Um, I said I wasn't gonna um, bring up the fact that there was someone on the phone, but I did. There was someone on the phone, and then two, the man was unemployed. I wasn't gonna bring this up, because I kind of spoiled myself by finding this out before I even watched the videos. But that was the biggest thing. When I found out that he was unemployed, I was like... Like, he really was just lying out of his ass. Like, listen, what... Like, how much does it cost him to just be like, hey, we can't afford a house? Hey, like... Obviously, he's not a good person, so that it cost him a lot to tell him, hey, tell her, hey, we can't afford this house, hey... I can't get a car for you. Just keep your car. I'm going to trust that this is the car she had before she met him. Or maybe she got a new one. Who knows? But, like, don't get me all up in arms. It's something else, too. It's like, if I have a working car, I would just allow me a new one. Because if I have a working car, I'm not going to, like, I'm, I'm not the type of person that, like, wants a new car. The only reason I have this iPhone 12 that's apparently is old now, but the only reason I have this iPhone 12 was because my iPhone 6 broke. Um, Not broke, but the battery stopped working. And I just need a new battery. And they were like, we don't even make that phone anymore. So you just gonna have to get a new phone. And the iPhone 12 had just came out. People, people were, like, throwing hands to get this iPhone 12. I don't know what the fuck was going on there. But um, the, the only color they had was this dark blue one, which I kind of liked. I think I think it came with purple, another, another color that I like more. But they only had this dark blue. And. Like, look at how new my phone is. The phone has never dropped. The, the front is new. Everything's new. So, that's the type of bitch I am. So, it's my, it's my car. I have a 2009. Um, Honda CRV. And I don't need a new car. So, if anybody, like, comes up to me and is, like, trying to talk to me to a new car, no. But, like, the thing is that, like, like she said, you can fall for a lot of things because of COVID. Like, because of COVID, a lot of things move differently. So, in 2020, I mean, because we were still in COVID and things don't move like they used to. We're way more used to, like, everything now. We don't we don't move as differently as before. We're kind of gone, gone back to reality as it used to be a little bit. Um... But no, I feel like she's right. A lot of the things that she kind of pushed off or maybe just gaslit herself away from thinking were due to COVID because I promise you half of the shit that happened, she would have probably clocked it if it wasn't during COVID. She would have clocked it way quicker if it wasn't during COVID. But anyway, yeah, we're in. We're only in pretend. So God knows it only gets worse. Um, I don't think she said, yeah, there was no one on the phone when she was talking. I don't think she's brought up the fact that he was unemployed. I don't think so. Um, I don't know if he got the car he was supposed to get. Um, I also think he was a mechanic and didn't work at the office he said he did. Um... But yeah, um, I think he first was a mechanic and then he was unemployed, which is when the whole car stuff happened, the whole house stuff happened. So he didn't have any money to buy, buy these things, period. Which is like, just be honest, right? But he's a narcissist and a uh, pathological liar. So, compulsive liar, pathological, whatever. Um, so he couldn't tell the truth because it brought him joy to know she wasn't gonna get that shit. So, there you go. This, this is crazy people out here. That's all we gotta hear about. Anyway, let me boot up this game, be your beep. And we'll watch part 11, 10, 12 to 20 tomorrow or Friday. Because I think I have, I think I have an airing I want to run tomorrow. So.